Well, you're right, guys. We've done cucumber dishes, we've done squash dishes, we've done courgette dishes, and now it is the turn of the aubergine. I've grown quite a few of these this year. Do follow along. I've got ten lovely dishes for you, and I tell you what, I'd have every one of them over and over again. I'm doing a voiceover for this series of dishes. It's, it's just so much easier to film without having to think about what I'm saying. <laughs> Some of the dishes I'm doing today call for uh, charred aubergines or burnt aubergines. Several ways you can do this. If you've just had a barbecue and you're planning an aubergine dish later in the week, good time to use that excess heat up. Or you can do what I do and uh, like the barbecue especially. You can slash them, you can prod them and prick them and cut X's into them, anything you want. Stick them on the heat and then all I do is brush them with a little oil to speed up the cooking process. If you don't want to char the aubergines on the barbecue, or you don't have a barbecue, uh, you can do it on a gas hob. Just place the aubergine directly onto the gas ring. Not a good idea to brush them with oil indoors. And just let them char away. Check on them now and again in the barbecue and uh, turn them over and you'll uh, have nicely griddled charred aubergines. And on the stove, obviously, you've got to stand there and watch it all the time. I'm showing you this at the front of the video, just to save me having to repeat myself over and over. They look lovely, don't they? Okay, guys, here we go. Let's get on with it. Okay, then, here we go with a baba ghanoush, or as I often mispronounce it, a baba ghanash. All of these dishes are being done to serve one or two people, so if you need more, just double up. So we have aubergine. Olive oil, lemon juice, garlic, I'll get back to that in a second, some tahini, salt, cumin seeds, and we'll have some parsley later on for dressing. Now, I'm using very lazy garlic with all my recipes. I had a poor garlic harvest, and I'm saving the cloves for roasted, because they taste great when they're roasted. Okay, then take your aubergine and cut it in half lengthways. Then with a sharp pointed knife, slash some diamonds into the flesh and turn them over and poke some holes in the top. Let's the steam out a bit. Brush the flesh sides with olive oil. A quick sprinkle of salt. Oil your baking tray. Put the aubergines on flesh side down and in the oven 220 celsius fan for about 20 minutes and they come out looking lovely if you prefer you can miss this step out and just use a charred aubergine right processor time scoop the flesh into the processor takes a while um, some of it sticks to the skin a bit but you don't want to miss any can't do all that trouble to uh, roast it properly in with the rest of the ingredients a uh, teaspoon of cumin seeds one crushed garlic clove or equivalent Two tablespoons of tahini. The juice of one lemon. Salt and pepper to taste. And then blitz away. We want to combine it all into a, a smooth, thick paste really. So drizzle in your olive oil. Stop now and again just to test it. Have a little taste, add more seasoning if you need to. It won't take long to come together, but do be careful with the olive oil. You don't want a, a runny liquid. When you're happy with the texture and taste, scoop it into your serving dish. Tidy up the serving dish because it's a right mess. Sprinkle on the chopped parsley and well, here we go. Mmm. Oh, that's nice, that. That is nice and lemony. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Well, I didn't know what to call this one, so it ended up as slow cooker aubergines. Very, very simple. And the great thing about it, stick it on in the morning and it's ready for you in the evening. I'm showing the ingredients in two images. One for the slow cooker and one for the dressing. So I'm using two aubergines, one's fresh and one's charred. 
a red onion, some pak choy and some celery. Now any firm vegetable would do. Uh, fennel would be good, for example. Uh, tomatoes, some sun-dried tomatoes, garlic, coriander seeds, olive oil and some seasonings. And for the dressing, we're just going to blitz together some flat-leaf parsley, basil, shallots and capers. And we've got a bit of goat's cheese and toasted almonds to sprinkle over the top. Turn your slow cooker on, a uh, high heat to start off with, drizzle in some olive oil, finely slice the onion and break it up into pieces, scatter it into the bottom of the slow cooker. Nothing too exact. In with your garlic and then cut your aubergines up, round about a centimetre slices, or half an inch slices. You can do it across the aubergine or lengthways, doesn't really matter. And I used a charred one and a fresh one because I just fancied the difference in tastes. The charred one can go straight in on top of the onions, but with the fresh one, you want to give it a brushing of olive oil on both sides and just lay them on top as well. Then it's in with the tomatoes. Now, I only had cherry tomatoes, so I just cut them in half and dropped them in. If you had a big tomato, like a beef steak, Again, cut it into sort of one centimetre slices, lay it on top. In with your chopped crunchy vegetables. Like I said, I use celery and pak choy for this. Just the stems of the pak choy. I've saved the leaves for later, don't worry. Fennel would be very good, actually. I'd like to try that with the aniseed taste. I just layer them on top again. In with your sun-dried tomatoes. You can put as many or as few as you want in, really. I, I think I put four in in the end. And then some coriander seeds. Again, as many or as few as you want. I used a tablespoon. And then it's on with the lid. Um, high heat for about four hours or low heat for eight hours. I did check it halfway through and give it a stir up. You can make the dressing any time you want. It will keep in the fridge for a fair while. Basil, um, shallots, or you could use spring onions parsley or you could use coriander I just strip the leaves off sometimes the stems don't blitz down very well in with about a tablespoon of capers they give it a bit of um, what bit of bitterness a bit of acidity astringency I think they call it and the juice of one lemon and some olive oil to bind it all together and blitz away to your heart's content And get your cheese ready, small chunks, or you can crumble it on top if it's a crumbly cheese. This is a nice one, British feta. Here we go. Ah, look at that, bubbling away. Like I said, I've stirred it halfway through, so the things aren't in the layers they started off in. <laughs> Plate it up, or dish it up in my case. Add a bit of dressing. And top it off with the feta and the toasted almonds. God, looks nice enough to eat this. I even put a pretty little basil flour on top. Mmm, 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 mmm. Nice girl, lush. Mmm. Oh, the dressing's quite sharp. Yep, 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 yep. Loving this one. Mmm! Parmigiana de Digwell, or Cheats Parmigiana, or Easy Parmigiana. And all you need for this is a one aubergine, a tin of chopped tomatoes and some tomato pesto, a ball of mozzarella, some Italian hard cheese, I used Parmigiano, and some seasoning, and of course the olive oil. Leave the stalk of the aubergine on and just slit it about two centimetre deep lengthways, a little bit deeper perhaps. Drizzle some olive oil in your shallow oven proof dish and some over the aubergine itself and just season lightly with a bit of salt and pepper. In the oven at 180 fan for 50 to 60 minutes depending on the size of the aubergine. You want it to be all nice and soft and squidgy just like this. Mix a few teaspoons of the tomato pesto in with the chopped tomatoes. 
You don't need to put this in, but I find it gives it a little bit of depth. I'll tell you what would be nice, would be some chopped basil leaves. Slice your mozzarella ball. This was a 125 gram ball. Set that to one side, then grate your uh, Italian hard cheese. And for this one, I used uh, Parmigiano. Any Italian hard cheese would do. And yes, the little lump that was left went in my mouth. Open the aubergine up a bit like a jacket potato, a baked potato. And then load it up with the tomato sauce, followed by the mozzarella slices. A bit of seasoning to taste. And finally the grated hard cheese. Place it under the grill until the cheese is, well, melting and golden. Mine took about 10 minutes. And it comes out looking something like this. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. It almost looks too good to eat. That's going to be hot. Mm. That is lovely. Mm. I'll tell you what I'm liking these aubergine dishes. And aubergine and pepper tagine. Now, it's not cooked in a tagine, but the end result looked like a tagine, so I called it a tagine. <laughs> it could just as easily be called an aubergine and pepper bake. Simplicity itself, this one, guys, with very little work. An aubergine, a red pepper and a red onion. Can of chopped tomatoes, can of haricot beans. Bit of garlic. For the spices, I used a mix of paprika, garam masala, and a bit of sumac for some citrus. But you could just easily use a, a baharat mix if you have it. Vegetable stock and some olive oil. Here we go. We're going to need to bake the fresh vegetables with the spices to start off with. So a drizzle of olive oil in your mixing bowl. And then roughly chop the onion, the pepper... And the aubergine. In with your garlic and a teaspoon of uh, salt. I used uh, flake sea salt for this one. More authentically you'd use a baharat mix for the spices. It's, it's more Eastern Mediterranean but I didn't have any. Garam masala and paprika mimic it quite well actually and the sumac it has a little bit of a citrusy tang to it. Give it all a good mix up. And tip the mix into your greased baking dish. Into the oven at uh, 200 Celsius fan for about 30 to 45 minutes until the vegetables start charring at the edges. In with a can of chopped tomatoes and about 100 ml of vegetable stock. Rinse the tin out, no point wasting it. And in with the haricot beans. Give it all a good mix up. And in the oven, this time about 30 minutes at 160 fan. That's good. 
Hmm. A nice simple aubergine writer. And for this we need a charred aubergine. A pot of yoghurt, I'm using natural yoghurt this time. Uh, some mint and a spring onion. That's a large spring onion so you could use a couple of small ones. Finally slice the spring onion and chop it up. And the same with the mint. Yes, I'm using the wrong knife for this, I know. We need to take the flesh out of the aubergine. We don't want the skin in the, uh, the rater to discolour it. So we're just going to scoop it all out and uh, oh, finally chop it up. In with the yoghurt and give it all a good mix in. I used about half a pot for this so that's about 250 mil. Any more than that it would have been a little bit too runny I think. In hindsight may have been better to use Greek yoghurt but this was different. Into your serving dish. Top it off with a few mint leaves and it's ready to serve. Oh, quick taste test then. Mmm, refreshing. Very refreshing. Mmm. Mmm. Today, Digwell from Dursley is serving the judges a dish of roasted aubergines served with a garlicky yoghurt drizzled with a runny butter flavoured with harissa. Or just plain roast aubergines served with yoghurt and harissa. And for this we need two aubergines. I got some Greek yoghurt, butter, garlic, harissa paste, some coriander for dressing and some sesame seeds and of course the ubiquitous olive oil for cooking with. So as the name suggests, we're going to need to roast these aubergines. So get the oven on, a 200 Celsius fan. Prick the aubergines all over. Pour some olive oil over them and either rub it in with your hands or brush it on. I'm going to coat the whole aubergine. And then into the oven with the tray for about 45 minutes. Check on the aubergines a few times while they're cooking and uh, turn them over if needed. And about five minutes before they're ready, prepare the uh, buttery harissa. And all I do for this one is about 75 grams of melted butter and a teaspoon of harissa paste. And just blend them together. Put it to one side. Don't make it too early because you don't want the butter to start solidifying. My aubergines are ready in 45 minutes. That wasn't a bad guess. Off the baking tray onto the chopping board and slit them open lengthways. Onto a warm serving dish and if you want to lightly season with salt and pepper. And while the aubergines are cooling a little bit make up your garlicky yoghurt. I used about six tablespoons of the Greek yoghurt and a teaspoon of the lazy garlic which is about two cloves of garlic. Give it all a good mix in. Time to build the dish, so spoon in your garlicky yoghurt. Drizzle over the harissa butter. Sprinkle on some chopped parsley or coriander if you prefer. And on with the sesame seeds. Job done. Wow. Got me done. Mm. Oh. 
Mm, I'm liking that. Mm. Oh, that's, the wrist is not too hot. I was expecting a bit more spice, but uh, that's nice. That is very, very nice. I'll tell you what, these aubergine dishes are getting a, a dig well thumbs up for all of them. Here we go then with my coconutty aubergine curry. Um, guess what? We need an aubergine for this. <laughs> a red onion, a tin of chopped tomatoes and a tin of coconut milk, some garlic, and the spices I'm using for this one are ground coriander, some turmeric, garam masala and some curry powder, salt and pepper to taste and the olive oil. And we start by dicing the veg. The red onion. These are my own red onions. These are uh, Red Baron. Very nice. And the aubergine. Unfortunately, the big, long, black aubergines, I had to buy those. I've grown quite a few, but not enough to do all these dishes. Now, unusually with this dish, you start cooking the aubergine first. So a bit of oil in the pan, and we're going to brown off the aubergines. Normally, on most dishes, you cook the aromatics first, like the onion and the garlic. When the aubergines are taking on a bit of colour, it's time to put in the onions, and we're going to cook these down as well. Not quite sweating them, but we're just going to get them to take on a little bit of colour. In with the garlic, uh, about a teaspoon, and a teaspoon each of the spices. So we've got the garam masala, the curry powder, the ground coriander, and the turmeric last. No particular reason of being last. <laughs> um, give it all a good mix up, then it's in with the chopped tomatoes. And give that a good mix up as well. I wish you had smelly vision this is lush. And then it's in with the coconut milk, and I love this little battery-operated can opener. You've got to watch this. It reminds me of a honeybee going back to the hive, you know? <laughs> so in with the coconut milk, mix it all up, and it's starting to look very curryish. And that's the hard work all done. Just leave it simmering on the stove top 15 to 20 minutes. Well, that looks ready to me. Here we go then. Sauce first. Yeah, that's oh, that's cool. Hmm. You know, so that's almost like a korma. Ooh. Hmm. That's good. So good, I'm saving this one for tea tonight. Mm. Next up is Digwell's Gratin. And again, I'm making this to serve too, so if you want more, just double up. It's all pretty much guesswork anyway. So we've got an aubergine, about 300 grams of potatoes, two red onions, some olives, garlic, tomatoes, uh, lemon juice, goat's cheese, that is soft goat's cheese, some basil and some thyme. Now the essence with this dish is thinly slicing. So I'm using, well it's a mandolin really, but it's called the V-slicer. I like this one it's got four or five different thickness settings. So slice the onions and the potatoes. I'm guessing they're about three millimetres thick. 
You can use a knife, but it won't be quite so even. And we need to make thin slices with the aubergine as well. And the best way I've found to do this is to cut it in half, lay it flat on your work surface, on your chopping board, hold the knife parallel to the board, and just push through with your hand on top. Be careful, I don't want to see anyone losing their fingers. And yes, I changed to a long handled bread knife because I couldn't film it properly with my little stubby Santuku knife. Get some olive oil in a large frying pan and brown the aubergine slices off in batches. Takes about two minutes per side. And as each batch gets browned, just place it on a piece of kitchen tissue on a tray and help soak up a bit of moisture and any excess oil. Much the same with the onions. Get them to start taking on a bit of colour, then in with the garlic. Get it all mixed up. And then it's time to build the dish. So lightly grease or lightly oil the bottom of your gratin dish. Layer of potatoes first, then a layer of the aubergines. <coughs> On with a layer of onions. A bit like a lasagna, really. You can use larger tomatoes for this. I wish I had. It would have been much quicker than a layer of tomatoes. On with the herbs. Now, if you've got uh, a fair bit of feta cheese, you could put some at this level as well. I just put mine near the top. Uh, another layer of aubergines. Another layer of onions. <laughs> another layer of tomatoes. And then we come on to the feta cheese. I wish I'd used uh, a firmer feta. This one's a bit squidgy, looks sticking to everything. It was alright though. In with the chopped olives. And the final layer of potatoes. Try and get these ones nice and neat. Brush them with oil. And into the oven, a 180 Celsius fan, about 45 minutes. Well, until the potatoes start going brown, really. I had a quick look at this one, uh, about 30 minutes in, and the potatoes were starting to curl on the outside, which is a good sign that they are cooking. I decided to put some Parmesan cheese on top, then back in the oven for the remainder of the cooking time. Where's the aubergine? There it is. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, liking that one. No blitzing with this one. It's a chunky aubergine soup. I'm using one fresh aubergine and one charred aubergine, a white onion, some harissa paste, a can of chickpeas, a can of chopped tomatoes and some oil. Dice the aubergine and the onion, about uh, one centimetre chunks will do. I'm trying to make a chunky soup look. A good glug of oil in a large pan and in with the onions. Onions first this time. Get the onions cooking. We're just trying to take on a bit of colour. Um, note to self, Steve. Next time you start cooking with the camera above the pan, put the fan on first. Like this. <laughs> in with the harissa paste. 
Yeah, I may have used a bit too much actually. It was, it was rather warm, so if you don't like a warm soup, maybe only one tablespoon. Give it a good stirring to coat the onions. Then in with the aubergines and coat those too. Just keep it cooking. About, um, about five minutes should do it. In with a can of chopped tomatoes. Give it a stir up and in with a can of chickpeas. Give it a good mixing up. And in with about 500 millilitres of water. Bring it to a boil. And we'll leave it simmering for about 20, 25 minutes. 30 minutes if you want it a bit thicker. Mm. Oh, that's warm. Yep, yeah, well, um, maybe a bit less harissa if you're not a warm person, you know. That's good. Oh, my nose is running already. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. And here we go with the charred aubergine risotto with lemon and saffron. No need to stand over the stove watching it with this one. It's done in the oven. So we have a charred aubergine, a white onion. I'm using a carnoli risotto rice for this one. Lemon juice, a garlic, Italian herb blend. I got some flat leaf parsley, vegetable stock, the saffron, um, salt and pepper and some oil. Well, guess what? We're going to dice the onion and aubergine. Getting used to this by now, guys. About centimetre chunks, a little bit smaller. Into your baking dish. You can pre-oil the baking dish if you want. Drizzle some olive oil over the aubergine and onion and sprinkle in about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. This is my own blend of this one. Add some salt and pepper to taste and the garlic did go in somewhere but I can't find the footage. Uh, give it all a good stir up and then into the oven 200 celsius fan for 20 to 30 minutes. You want to start baking the uh, start baking the vegetables. And while it's baking you can make up your saffron stock. I dissolved a stock cube or a stock pot in 750 ml of boiling water for this recipe. It's a bit more water than you'd normally use, but the other uh, water gets absorbed into the rice anyway. And, well, a sort of um, small pinch of saffrons, I suppose. Give it a good mix in and set it to one side for later. Goes yellow quite quick. Measure out the 250 ml of risotto rice. Like I say, this is for two people. And when the aubergine and onion are baked, stir in the rice. This partially coats with a bit of oil as well, which is what is supposed to happen with the risotto. Pour in the saffron stock and yet again give it a good mixing. It is quite yellow look. Some bits left in the bottom. Get it all stirred in. Lid on. 
then back in the oven for another 20-25 minutes just so the rice is like the opposite of an armadillo you want it soft on the outside and firm in the middle and while it's doing its final bit of cooking you can make up your uh, lemony parsley so just finely chop the parsley and pour over the juice of one lemon mix it all together so they infuse When you're happy with the texture of the rice, stir through half of the lemony parsley. And the rest will go on top. Wow, here we go. Hmm. Hmm. That is lemony. Hmm. I'm liking this one. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it, guys. Ten aubergine recipes. I do hope you'll have a go at some of these. I'll tell you what, I've not done a vegetable cooking series where I've enjoyed every single dish as much as this lot. I'd make every one of these over and over again. Anyway, uh, look after yourselves out there, take care, and I'll catch you on the next video. <laughs>